Hello, I'm Charlene Mosier from the Foff Creative Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington, and Sound Sewing, Silverdale, Washington. Today we're going to give you a demonstration on the Foff Ambition 610. So the Ambition 610 is the first one in the line of the Ambition series, and it is an electronic machine with a 200 millimeter uh, throat space in here, so it means it's just shy of 8 inches in here. It has a full light bank around the needle, and it comes with a needle threader. It has a tray that pops off where behind you can raise and lower your feed dogs. The tray also has storage in the back and storage in the front where all your feet are located for easy use. And it does have a good selection of decorative stitches. So let's get you a little bit closer and show you some more. So just a little bit uh, closer view. We'll get you closer here in a moment. So some things that you would like to know about this machine is first of all it does have a speed control right on it. So this is uh, when you go all the way down it goes to the slowest speed it can go and as you go up it can go to the highest speed. That's because located right here on the top button of the two buttons is a start stop key. So this key allows you to run the machine without a foot control. You do get a foot control with the machine but sometimes if you're doing a long stretch of a decorative stitch or you forget, go to class and forget your foot control, it's really nice to know you can still sew and then you can actually use this in tandem with it to allow you to slow it down. Because wherever this is located, the machine will go that speed. The button right below it is a traditional reverse. Then if we come up here to the top of the machine, you'll see that we have these buttons. So these buttons located over here on the right hand side are for you to select your stitches. So they are one through zero. I have where I could change my width control and my length control right here on my stitch and I do have a decorative stitch number 82 in at this time and then some other features. I'm going to get the camera a little bit closer so we can show you some more. Alright so on this machine we do have a lid that flips up for where your thread goes and where you wind your bobbin and then it also lists all your decorative stitches that are located on this machine. There are a total of 110 7 millimeter stitches. So seven millimeter stitches is the width of the decorative stitch. And this is a sample of some seven millimeter stitches that can be done. This was actually done on an Ambition, but not this particular Ambition. So some stitches may vary, but it's a great, they're beautiful, great stitches from satin stitches to uh, just uh, triple stitches on here and some candle wicking. So some really fun creative stitches to play with. And we took them and we made them into a double zipper bag. So we have a pocket in the front here as well as a pocket in the front for a nice, nice bag, okay? So along with these stitches, they do list the, the uh, stitch number under them. So if we got get you guys really close in here so you can see this, is you can see that if I want this stitch here, it's number 47, okay? So I would actually zoom out here, so to get it, it's really, really simple. I would actually just type 47 and then the stitch will process and come directly on my screen. So on my screen here, it tells me the stitch is seven millimeters, which I can alter it if I like and bring it down. It also tells me the stitch is 12 millimeters, which I also can alter. And then what happens is, is when you go too far with it, it will actually beep at you, so you can't go any more. It darkens the stitch here so that you know that you have altered it. So if I've altered it and I want to take it back to normal, I don't know where normal is, it's really simple to just go ahead and reselect stitch 47 again, which tells you right here that's stitch 47, and then it will reset it back to normal. The other thing, if I want to know which foot to use on the machine, I would just press my I key here for info, and it tells me that I need to have a needle in, a 2A foot, that stabilizer is recommended, the feed dog should be up, and that my tension should be between two and four, which is the tensions right up here. So it tells us everything we need to know, and then I would grab the foot that is listed in my, in my foot pack in my accessory tray down here that says 2A, and I would snap it on. Okay, so on the front panel of this machine, we've already just gone through your, your things here where it says your foot, your stabilizer, your feed dog should be up, and then uh, where your tension should be. Your tension at the top naturally comes from the company normally set right at four and you'll notice that it has the range between three and five with a bar on it to so with this like right here right there with a bar across it to say anywhere in there is what they consider normal tension with regular sewing thread okay 
So um, I feel it doesn't need a whole lot of changing of the tensions. If you're using consistently weight, uh, good quality thread, it seems to handle the tensioning very well because it's got a consistent thread in it. The next thing is if I wanted to close this, I just press the I key again for info to close it. This uh, also has some other functions on here. First of all, I'm going to select another stitch so you can see this next thing better. I'm going to go to the flowers, which is number 82. And so we have like this tulip flower here. And right here is a mirror. So if I suppress this, it will actually flip the stitch the other way. So the advantage of that is, is if you're trying to sew something through the, the machine here on your fabric and you have something and you want this flower to go a particular way, instead of you turning your fabric, get you in the shot here, instead of you turning the fabric or your project around where your project may have to go through here, you can simply just mirror the stitch by using this key here and flip the stitch for you. It's a real nice asset actually. Next thing we have is this is your needle down right here and a tie off, immediate tie off feature. So the next thing we have is Alt. Now this one doesn't have anything in it, so it's going to beep at us. Uh, and then I showed you the info, and then right here is the tools. So in the tools is where I can go in, and there are some setting things we could do in here. So the first thing is, when it first comes up, is this machine will allow you to do twin needles. And so that means a single shaft with two needles coming out, and you would just tell it by darkening it by pressing OK that I'm doing a twin needle, and then I'd pick my needle size. That would then, when I press the tools again to close it, see what it did to my tulip? It shrunk it way down for this particular needle so that when I do a twin needle, see these were done with twin needles in here, where it's a needle side by side, and then it will actually uh, shrink the stitch to fit into the plate so you don't break that twin needle because it can be quite expensive. So when I'm done twin needle sewing, I would actually just have to go into my tools again and undarken my twin needle. It also has where you have a stitch width safety, so if you pop on a quarter inch foot um, or a, use a single needle plate when it becomes available, you can actually protect your, your uh, quarter inch foot or your single needle plate so that you don't accidentally go to do a stitch with zigzag that can break your needle and harm your foot or your plate. You could choose what language you want it in, and then this machine does have an alarm sound that beeps at you, and you could turn it on or off. I prefer to have it on because if it's not doing a command I'm asking it to do and it's not beeping at me to tell me that I can't do this or I'm not designed to do it, then I just think my machine's ignoring me. So I leave that on. So you press tools to close that. Let's go ahead and select another stitch here, which is my honeycomb stitch number eight. And then I was going to go, nope, I gotta figure out why, where my alt <laughs> opens up. I cannot remember right now. But then we also have down here, I have two other keys, which I have a start stop key, and then I have a reverse key. So the start stop key allows me to come in and put my foot down and I can run the machine with my start stop key without the foot control. And then that's when, like I was telling you before, that I can use my speed control, you can hear it speed up and slow down, to actually gauge the speed that my start stop key is do doing. And that will also work with your foot control as well. All right, so now I'm down in the sewing area of my machine uh, that we're showing you today. And so I'm going to show you how the needle threader works. So I'm going to lower my foot because I have the thread up to my needle threader. And I bring the threader down and turn it and I'm pushing it towards the needle. Then I go under my hook in front of my needle. And when I pull it back, I let go of the tail and it makes this loop back here. And then I can pull that through. So I just want to point out that I did that with a camera in my way. So it really does work very well. The next thing is you just would pop up your foot to put your thread underneath. The other thing is to, to change the feet on this machine is very simple. You just push on the front toes and the foot falls off. Then you can line up the foot underneath the ankle and push it right up. Or, because you have these two pegs here, you can also just lower the foot directly on it. The bobbin's a drop-in bobbin so you can always see it. And it um, is very easy, very easy to thread. So threading this bobbin, you would actually drop it in. I always put my finger on it and you just bring it up through this groove and around. And when you bring it down to here and pull on it, it cuts the thread, okay? So, and then you, there's no need to actually pull it up when you start to sew because it made that long tail and it'll come up on your first stitch. However, 
if you're quilting or doing anything like that, I always pull up my top thread and hold it all the way through my fabric so I just have a better idea of how that thread is cooperating because it is kind of loosey-goosey down there. So it is a good habit to do that if you're quilting. Other than that, if you're just sewing and doing a seam, you could just go for it. Also want to point out too, on the side of the machine here, we actually do have uh, the pressure lifter here for how much pressure is actually on the pressure foot. A lot of machines, uh, mechanical machines, have that, and it's usually located directly up here on top of the machine, and it's a wheel. So this one's located on the side of the machine. The next thing I want to show you in this demo is how easy it is to do a button. So I'm going to just take off my foot here. So a buttonhole is what I meant to say. Sorry about that. And we take my buttonhole foot and I'm going to open up the back of it. So this is my buttonhole foot. We open up the back. Now I don't have a button here today so I'm just going to put in a bobbin just to put, have my space holder. So you normally would put a button there and I'd come directly in and I would come in and lower this foot directly on, on it. Number five is in the front which means that's how it hooks on and back behind the needle threader there's another little lever I pulled down. The buttonhole on this machine, there is two, four, six different buttonholes. I'm going to do the standard one, which is the very first one, number 18. And I just select it. And then basically what you would do is, I'm going to go ahead and put my fabric in here. And I would just line up where I want it and press the go key. And it's going to do the whole thing for it. So it does a straight stitch back, satin stitch forward. Then it's going to do a straight stitch back, bar tack at the end, satin stitch forward, bar tack in the front, and then do a tie off. Then I would just raise my foot, pull it out. There's my buttonhole right there. I use my seam ripper to open it up and move on to my next one. Of course, I would open it up when I got them all done. Very important when you're looking at a machine, you want to have good, accurate buttonholes is to see how the buttonholes feed. If they feed the satin stitches both in the forward position or in the back position, you're going to have a better buttonhole than if it feeds it in around, meaning it does a satin stitch going up and then bar tack does a satin stitch going down and then bar tack. The reason why is if you're using a particular thread with a sheen or even with a a special twist if the satin stitches along the buttonhole are done in two different direction you're going to get a sheen on one side and not the other and then they won't look they won't look like they're the same thread so that's why that's important on how it feeds okay so now you've seen the buttonhole so the next thing I would do is just put my buttonhole lever up and I would snap off my foot the next thing I do is go back to my everyday sewing foot right there. The next thing that this has, which is Foff is known for, is right here. This is the built-in walking foot that can snap down at any time or pull down in a way to disengage. This is an upper feeding system to help feed the fabric through. The feed dogs on here already feed in a box feed, so that means that they actually come up, stroke all the way back, and come down. So they feed it actually like a box. So what that does for you is if I was to disengage that right now and go with something sheer, I'm going to put this in, lower my foot. Now I don't have my walking foot on right now or my IDT. And when I feed, see how it's tight and it's curling up the fabric back here? Okay, see how it did that? That's because of this weave is really pushing around. So if I was to take this, try to get this back in my machine. Come on now. Okay. If I was to take this, engage that IDT in the back, so I just pushed it down, put this back down, I'm still on that bias, and then look how it just falls right off the machine now. Much, much better. So then I can take this out, and I can cut it, and now you can see the difference here of without my IDT and with my IDT. So the IDT is basically a upper feeding system that is engineered and is uh, integrated into the feeding system. So it will actually feed in the forward and the reverse position uh, with your feed dogs. So it's going to feed perfectly. So stretch fabric, sheer fabric, lining up plaids, lining up stripes, not a problem because the IDT is going to have everything feed together. 
So if you think this is a machine you might be interested or if you have more questions, feel free to give us a call on our website, which you can find at soundsewing.com. And we'd love to tell you more about this machine or feel free to come on into either one of our stores. Again, the Foff Creative Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington, or Sound Sewing, Silverdale, Washington. Thank you.